we're going to end at at nine. So we're going to cover chapter one and chapter two, uh, which is just a chapter one, which is or oh, uh, study unit. I must talk about study units because the chapters are from the book, and your chapters from the books do not always going to align with your study unit number. So I'm going to use your study guide as a guide. So study unit one, which covers basic um, statistics concepts, and also we're going to do study unit two, which is data visualization. We will see how far we get in terms of that because it's too much work. Um, uh, and if we don't finish the data visualization, so on Saturday we will start with that and then we do a lot of other exercises. We will see how far we get. So I'm not going to do a lot of introduction because I um, I, I hope you already went on to my UNISA. You saw who I am. I introduced myself also on the um, on the forum, and I also I also introduced uh, myself on uh, when we had the the session. I think last week. I introduced who I am. There is so much information that you can find out about me online everywhere else. So if you want to know who I am, um, I'm not also going to ask you to introduce yourselves. So I will also check on the on the chat um, every now and then to see who is um, responding. I might call out your name to get clarity on some of the things that you post there. Other than that, welcome. And let's start with statistics. I hope you're going to enjoy the sessions and always come back um, week in, week out. So let's start with statistics. And my finger doesn't want to move. OK, so by the end of the session, you should be able to learn what is statistics, what are the key concepts of statistics, um, understand the types of variables and know the different levels of measurement, sometimes called the scales of measurement. I must also um, say something here before we even start. Um, do not start with your assignment as yet, but if you have already, there's no harm with that because I'm here to help you uh, complete your assignment, but not do it for you, but help you in terms of making sure that you understand the work before you complete your assignment. I think when you do your assignment as well, you, you get three chances. Your assignment questions are different. I will elaborate this again on, 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 on Saturday when we do the activities and exercises so that you understand how your assignments are structured. So they are different. They are shuffled around so every student will not receive the same question so the question that you receive might be different to the next person so when we do assignment questions some of them they might be one of yours but almost they look exactly almost exactly the same it's just there and there where there are changes um, and not every student will receive the same type of question but the structure of the questions are exactly the same. So it means if someone will get a question that gives them a hundred, the other one will get a question that gives them 300. So it's like that. One will get a question that says Tom, the other one might get a question that says Peter, but all of them might be asking the same question, the same thing. Okay, so let's get on to it. Um, assignment questions, you can ask them on Saturday. Uh, on Wednesdays, this is the, uh, the last thing that I'm going to do also now. On Wednesday, we discuss the content. So anything relating to content, what you didn't understand when you were studying, if you want me to elaborate more, you ask it on Wednesday. On Saturday, we do lots of activities. Then you can weigh in your assignment questions as well. I think that introduction it's meant for all the other sessions to come so that I don't have to repeat myself <clears throat> again. So tonight, by the end of the session, you should be able to learn what is statistics, the con key concepts within statistics, understand the types of variables, and know the different levels of measurement. So what is statistic? 
I am a statistician. So with statistics, you get data from different sources. Uh, it can be from surveys, it can, it can be from the systems, the your CRM systems, it can be things that you um, you wrote down. So it, different sources, it can be from uh, <clears throat> Excel sheets that you have or web document or PDF, as long as it's got data or information on there, that is a data source. We take that data source, we transform it um, make some calculations to it, uh, calculate like things like the mean, the average and all that. And once we have enriched it with those calculations and um, uh, pivoting it and doing a lot of summaries and putting it into context, then we present it. When we present it, we present it either as a graph or as a table or as pictures. These days we use what we call infographics. And once we do that, then we give it to people who make decisions and they look at that information and they make decisions out of it. And that is basically what statistics is all about. It, statistics is a way or it's a method of transforming your data into meaningful, useful information for decision making. That's what statistics is. Why do we study statistics? Since um, there are so many things happening around us. We need to make sure that we are well informed. And these days we talk about evidence-based decisions. We always want to see the evidence before we make the decision. For example, like we use statistics to develop an appreciation of variability, meaning the changes that are happening, how <clears throat> those changes affect how we develop our products or our, how we process things through the system and so forth, and how we build the systems as well. It, statistics also helps us in estimating the, <clears throat> the new values, the present. So we can use the historical information to estimate what's going to happen tomorrow. Um, there is someone who is not muted. Um, I hear all the time. Tlangi, your hand is up. When I do the presentation, sometimes I don't see the hands because I'm talking. Tlangi? Is it a historical hand or something? Do you have a question? Okay, no answer. I'm going to mute. Okay, so we use historical data to estimate the present and predict what the future will look like. We use statistics as well to understand the basic things about the statistical reliability, whether the data that we are using, is it going to make meaningful decisions or are we going to use it to make meaningful decisions as well? And also, to check the stochastic processes, meaning to check if there are any of the fluctuations or any of the probabilities that we can calculate from there. We also use statistics um, in most of the sectors, even nowadays in the business, you use um, most of the businesses use statistics. For example, those who work in insurance companies, um, the people who manages the portfolios of insurances, they use the statistics measures, like measures of variability to check whether um, the portfolio that they're looking at, is it going to be a risky one or not? Um, or can they save your clients or customers money by looking at that? And if you are in the product development, they will use statistics to check if that product that they built, is it, um, uh, do customers like it? Do, are they buying it? What is the average over time? Um, they can also use it to predict how long will that product be on the market before people stop using it, things like that. So they, you, um, many businesses are using um, statistics. Also, the government is using 
statistics as well. Like we also know that we have Statistics South Africa where they do surveys and they analyze the data and they present all those. And we also see that they also sometimes um, the police also, the police minister also uses the, the crime statistics, they report on that, the accident statistics, they report on those things. So statistics is everywhere. We use it on a daily basis as well. So um, <clears throat> we use it to solve problem in a general no, a, a general thing. So we, we take statistics and we use it to solve many of our problems that we have. So some of the interesting things that we use statistics in is with the COVID now. You saw that in the beginning when we started with the COVID, there were a lot of models that people were building, statistical models, and the, um, even though it was in the area of medicine. So the, in medicine, there's what we call biostatistics. So it uses the medical information or medical data to make decisions out of it. So we call those the biostatistics. So we they use that or the epidemiologist, they use that data to make um, decisions based on diseases that ha are happening. Um, they were tracking the COVID. We could see that it was exponentially uh, increasing and, and, and so forth. So and that is why statistics is very important in that regard. Um, with the political campaigns, we always see on ENCA, they're always closer to the um, to the voting. You will see that they will be analyzing the statistics, like the, the political campaigns and saying this party will win, this party is gaining majority, this one is doing that. And those summaries that they make, it's part of what statistics is all about. Even though it is, it is in the... Um, <clears throat> It is in the um, broadcasting advertising uh, uh, arena or area, but they are able to use the information to make decisions to also inform the public in terms of what people are saying about things. And yeah, also yeah. statistics. Yeah, so those who, yes, Tammy? There is a hand from Etienne. Please check. Uh, okay, Etienne. Sorry, you you were on such a roll. I didn't I didn't want to stop you. Uh, no. <clears throat> Next time, uh, stop me if I'm moving too fast because then I might. I'm I'm not constantly looking at my phone actually. Okay. So um. <laughs> so the question the question is around the the statement you made regarding statistics for like medical and political campaigns and things like that. How do they know which is the right model to use? I have the feeling that they have, even within the, the organ these particular organizations, they have conflicting models that has the correct predict predictions. How do they know which is the right one to use? Uh, that's the thing. With statistics, you won't know which, mod which is the right model. So we always check the efficacy of the model. We check um, the there are measures that you you use to test whether the model that you've built is it a good model can fit the data well. Um, so, for example, let's say you wanted to predict uh, you you want to predict um, whether there will be the third wave. So, in in biostats, they have their own type of models that they built, but they. All of them, they are based on the statistical capabilities, like the, the statistical models. So whether they build it as a, a regression model or they build it as a neuro, neural uh, network or they build it as a decision tree or so there are different models or they they use Bayes nays, they use forecasting. So they are different. So it, it will also depend on the kind of data that you are using. And once you have built that model in statistics, what we also prefer as well is to build as many models as possible using different techniques and different algorithm and then use the measures that you get from there. But it's a discussion for another day. So we use those measures like your MSE, which are your mean square errors. We use 
things like your SSE, which is your sum square errors. We use things like the misclassification to check whether every model that you built, which one has the lesser classification um, uh, errors, which means it does not predict wrong things. It does not say um, one will fail, whereas the one will pass, gotcha. whereas the, uh, that person has passed. So there are different techniques that we use. So you will never know which one, unless if you put all the models uh, together and use those measures and different models produce different measures. Okay. Um, so you need to put them like uh, evaluate each one separately and then look at them uh, and see which one best fit the data. So it's, it, it's fascinating. So you should love statistics and you should be like looking forward to learning more about it. So it's, it's, not a, it's not a perfect science. Yes, no. Um, that is why they say uh, statistics can tell a lot of lies. Hey. Uh, okay, but... that's, why work, that's why it works for government mostly then. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you. You've answered my question. Thank you. All right. So, so with statistics, we do have two branches of statistics. So we have what we call the descriptive statistics, and that is what the majority of the people are using. Like you use it on a daily basis. You talk about on average, I spend 20 rent. Those are just descriptive. You you are describing how much you uh, you are spending on, on uh, monthly on petrol or something like that. Um, and then descriptive statistics sometimes, like most of the time when they report on the crime statistics, they just tell you that uh, from uh, Easter holidays, gender viol uh, gender based violence cases have increased. Uh, in December, there were a lot of uh, murders. So those are just dis description because they just give you the percentages and this and that. And that is what we call descriptive mm -hmm. statistics. So with descriptive statistics, you just collect the data and you summarize the data. So collecting the data, you can collect it via the surveys or you can use your CRM tables. Like when you go to a shop, when you go to, let's say you go to ShopRite and you buy grocery and you buy things, the information it gets stored on their database and they can take that and analyze it and to do some manipulation of the data and analyze it and calculate the mean, the mode and all that. So collecting that information, it's part of a descriptive statistics. And then we summarize it and we visualize it in terms of tables or charts or graphs. And these days we use what we call infographics for nice pictures that tells one story. And we can also analyze it by manipulating the data and, and calculating things like your mean, your standard deviation, and so forth, and the mode and the median, and so forth and so forth. So we also have on the other side, so with descriptive statistics, we are just describing the data. There is nothing other than describing what the data looks like. Inferential statistics, on the other hand, yeah, we infer information. So like when Etienne was asking, there are a lot of models that people are building and which one can we trust? That is inferential statistics. That's where you take the data that you have, you sample it out and then you create a model, a statistical model or econometrical model or biostatistic model. Uh, you create that and based on the results, you can then if depending also in terms of how you selected your sample, because then sometimes there is um, you can select a sample, but your sample might uh, may, may not be a representative of your population. Uh, and I will discuss I will discuss in more detail what I'm talking about right now. So but for now, bear with me. So you create a sample and you find that that sample is not a representative of your population. Then when you build your models, you cannot infer the results of your sample analysis to your population. You cannot say because your results of the population say South African people are obese from that sample. You cannot say yes, sorry, from the sample that you, you calculated, you cannot say South African 
people are obese if your sample was not a representative. So in terms of 1610, you do not need to know what I'm talking about by sampling uh, the data. You only need to know the definition of what is a sample and what is the population. So if you continue with stats and you want to learn more, then we can talk about how we do the sampling from taking the sample from the population in order for us to make sure that that sample is a representative so that the results we get from using the sample, we can infer it back into uh, into the population and say the population looks like this. OK, so with inferential statistics, we can do estimation where we estimate the population mean using the sample mean. Or we can also do a hypothesis testing and both of this estimation we will do it in chapter eight when we do confidence interval and hypothesis testing. We will do it all throughout from um, when we do hypothesis testing and uh, when we do the chi-square testing and all that. So all of them we will be applying hypothesis testing. So with hypothesis testing, we will be testing a claim that the researcher make about the population based on the sample um, data that we have. Um, so, Miss Lizzie. Yes. Uh, sorry, if it's it's incorrect to say hy hy um, hypothesis testing is far richer than an estimation in statistics. Not necessarily. Uh, remember the hypothesis. You're testing a claim. Your estimation. You are estimating if the value falls within. So, so it's a different can, way thing. Okay. Yes. So okay. you can you are estimating a new value whether and and you can use hypothesis testing to test whether that estimation okay. falls within that and make your decision based on that because if if it falls within the uh, lower boundary and the upper boundary then you can say that uh, the population mean is within but if it's outside then you can say that it's not within and you can make your decision to say you can exclude or you do not have to trust the estimation and you cannot use the information. With hypothesis testing, you already have a claim. You know what you want to prove. So you say South African people are obese. You need to go and prove that claim. And so that is the difference between the two. So with the estimation, you only want to test whether that uh, sample mean is within the lower boundary or upper boundary and it fit falls within that then you can say the population mean is within as well and you can rely on that data and use it to estimate any any information and you can use that to estimate a new value hypothesis testing on the other hand you have a claim you want to prove it otherwise so they it, it's what we call there is um you are guilty until proven innocent or something like that. You are innocent until proven guilty. Ah, that's that's law thing. But there are two sides of a coin. There is a head or a tail. And I want to prove that that coin always lands on a head. You have to prove it by tossing that coin so many times and then collecting that information and summarizing it and say, but that coin is not a fair coin. Things like that. OK, so with inferential statistics we draw conclusion about the population based on the sample that we created okay so since i've already introduced what the population and the sample let me explain what those are so a population is a set of all elements or all subjects that you are interested in studying so south africa is the population the whole of south africa if I want to study the universe, then the universe is my population. If I want to study African countries, all African countries, all African countries are my population. So it's elements that you are interested in studying, all of them. Sometimes when we do studies, the population is too big that you cannot reach each and every person even including with the census you know that most of the time this we say the census we read we count every person in south africa it's impossible 
to count everyone because you move around the time that the people come in you are not here so they won't count you that is the census that is why they call it the census so to count the population of the countries but population is everybody who's in south africa if statistics south africa comes back after they did the census and they estimated and they said in south africa we've got 59 million people therefore that is our population because the population is too big and we cannot uh, use everything that we collect from the population or we cannot reach some of the population for a study we then opt to create what we call a sample or oh, before i move on to the sample so when we create a population when you have defined your population and you start calculating you're doing your uh, descriptive statistics there and you calculate your mean your median your mode your standard deviation your population um, proportions and all that those measures that you create from the data that you collected from the population they are what we call parameters so the minute you calculate the mean you are creating a parameter so if you go and calculate so you will need to go and learn and later on when we do when we do the descriptive uh, descriptive statistics in chapter study unit three in study unit three you will learn about the different uh, parameters or measures but the parameters are like your mean your median your standard deviation your mode all of them they make parameters so the minute you calculate your population measures then you are you are using or you creating a parameter then because the population is too big we create what we call a sample so for example um, like i said in this module you do not need to know how we do the sample but you just need to know that from a population we can select different people to sample to make up a sample a new uh, a base that we can use for uh, doing the descriptive analysis or doing inferential statistics and that is what the sample is it's a subset of your population so we select different people so if we wanted our sample to have only five people so we can say that one that one that one that one that one becomes part of our sample and <clears throat> then we can calculate the measures from there from the sample and those measures from the sample when we calculate like the mean the median the standard deviation the mode and so forth that we calculate from the sample are called statistics and that is the reason why statistics is a terminology used because most of the things that we do in statistics we use the sample the sample to infer what the population will look like but the measures we get from here from the sample we call them statistics or a statistic if it's one if it's the mean we just say it's a statistic um not statistics and if there are so many we say there are statistics because there are measures like the mean the median the standard deviation the mode coefficient of variation and so forth okay now exercise I've been talking for almost 40 minutes. In a hospital, seven random, randomly selected patients have a blood type O, A, B, B, A, O, O, and A. From the information that I just read, identify what is the population and identify what is the sample. You can type in the chat if you are able to so you can use the chat to type and then i'll give you two minutes to think about your answer in a hospital seven randomly selected patients have the blood types o a b b a o o n a 
what is your population of study and what is your sample you can type in the chat uh, let me see do i have a chat your, your your chat the chat is disabled we can't type there the chat is disabled oh, okay i don't know why okay mm. so you are not able to chat with me okay think about it and then just now i will check why the chat is disabled Hmm. I also cannot type in the chat. Okay, so since I cannot type also in the chat, You maybe want one of us to try and wing the answer over the conference over the. Yes, okay. I will give you. Yeah, I will give you chance for someone to. To say. OK. OK, so. Anyone? You can unmute. Well, maybe maybe if I raised <laughs> raised it, let me let me wing it. Yes, um, you can wing it. So I'm going to say uh, the population is the blood types, and the sample are the seven randomly selected patients. I could be wrong. Hey, anyone? Any take? Come, guys, back me up. Don't leave me alone. Okay. okay. Um, the population uh, is all the patients in the hospital, and then the sample is the seven uh, randomly selected patients. Yes. So, ah. their population is all patients. All patients in the hospital your sample is a subset of the patient which are only the seven randomly selected patients remember your population is your population is the element of interest blood type is not it's not what you are you are you are it's not what you are studying you are studying patients from the hospital. And from that study, you wanted to look at their blood, their blood type. So it means your population of study will be all the patients and your sample will be your seven randomly selected. So this, as long as you have this thing called randomly selected, it means they have sampled out from a bigger pool. Okay. I, so I think if they said like, I think if they said like in a hospital of 500 patients, then it would have. Uh -huh. uh, they would have made. You would have. Be, because in, in in our world, you, you if you get this in an exam question, they will give you a they will tell you in a hospital of 700 patients, seven randomly. Then it yes. makes more sense. Sorry, so I understand now. Yeah. 
OK. OK, so so uh, from this, they also we want to study those seven patients, but we want we are interested in their blood type. So blood type and the O's and the B's and the A's are what we call the variable and the O's and the B blood type is a variable and the O and the B is the uh, data that comes from there. OK, so what is a variable? Like I said, blood type is your variable. So a variable is the characteristics that define the population or a sample. And that characteristics, you can observe it or you can measure it. Like, for example, uh, these days you don't want to say things wrong, actually. So I was going to say um, when I'm, I'm, I'm going to go old tradition way here. Um, yeah, so those who are um, uh, uh, LGBTQI family, please bear with me. Um, um, I'm going to apologize now well in advance. Um, I'm going to be stereotype, a, a stereotype person here. So I'm going to give you a, uh, an example that everybody can understand um, without insulting anybody. So let's use gender. I know that we no longer use gender. We use sex orientations and all that. But for now, let's use gender. So a variable, let's say gender, you can observe a person by looking at the person. But these days, we can no longer do that. But previously, in the old days, in the olden age, you will observe a person and you will say, that is a female, and you will observe another person and say, that is a male. That is a variable. So by just observing it, or you look at the person and you cannot just say that person is 1.67 tall. You need to take a measuring tape and measure the person's height and you will say that person is 1.67 and that is how you measure. So the variable is something that you can observe or you can measure. From the variable, let's say I'm using gender as my example. From my variable, I can the minute I say when I observe that variable and I see there is a male or female, then I'm talking about the data within that variable. The data that describe that variable are either a male or a female or 1.67 tall or 1.57 in terms of your height. The data is just a set of individual values associated with your variable. So a variable describes the population or the sample characteristics. So like, for example, you get a blue pen, a black pen and a red pen in terms of their color. You get different type, different models of a pen. So those things are just the data. A variable is the color of a pen. The measure will be blue, red and black, which are the actual values associated with that variable color of a pen. So we have two different types of variables. We have the first one is what we call a categorical variable, which is a qualitative variable. It's variable that you can observe. Like your marital status, your political party, eye color, and these are variables that have a defined categories within them, and you can observe them. Then we also have what we call numerical data or variables, which we also call them quantitative data or variables because uh, the data will be the measures, the values that comes from there. So we have numerical or quantitative. Quantitative variables are variable that either you can measure or you can count. And if it's a measure that you can count, it's what we call a discrete variable. If it's a measure that you can measure, it's what we call a continuous variable. So if it has a decimal, let's put it this way. If it has a decimal, it can be a continuous. If it's in a whole number, if it takes a whole number, 
then it can be a discrete because discrete we count them there are variables that are not going to be discrete even though we count them but because of the manner in which we refer to them they in a in a normal environment for example age in a normal environment we would have said i am 21 years old i am 30 years old and in a normal environment we would have said age is discrete because it's a whole number we, we use it in a whole number manner but age age is continuous you must also know that always know that age is continuous money is continuous even though we can count it but it's continuous because it's money it's in rent and cents that is why we have dot comma zero zero at the end you need to always remember that so discrete variables are variables that you can count number of children that you have defects per hour like in a factory when you count how many defects the machine drops out or uh, spills out you can count those because the items are individual items you can count how many defects are produced within um, uh, by that machine or in that factory continuous things that we measure like weight height voltage temperature and so forth don't worry i'm going to ask you to do an exercise just now so remember that categorical data data that you can observe and put into categories numerical data is data that you can either count when you count it it's called discrete variable quantitative discrete or numerical discrete Data that can be measured, it's called continuous, quantitative continuous variable. Your exercise. From this earlier statement that we used, AOABAOA, identify what is a variable, identify what is a data, identify whether the variable is numeric or categorical which means is it a quantitative is it a quantitative or is it a qualitative you have one minute to think about the answer and um and then I'm going to call out. Anyone can answer the question. Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. What was the question? Okay, are you done? Let's uh, let's see. Anyone identify what is a variable? In a hospital, seven randomly selected patients have a following blood type. O A B B A O O A. What is a variable? I have blood Remember? types. Blood types is your variable because blood type is a characteristic that defines those seven patients. What is a data? Seven patients. Which one is the data? The seven patients. Nope. Which one is the data? Remember, data is the values. 
associated with the blood types. So which one are the values? Your data is the blood types, the different blood types. So the O, the A, B, the B, the A, and so on. These are your data. Okay. Identify whether the variable is a numeric or is categorical. Categorical. Is the blood type numeric or categorical? Categorical. Can I measure them? Can I count them? Can I put them into categories? <coughs> can, categories. can I measure? Can I count them? Or can I put them into categories? We can put them can into put categories. Them. I can put them into categories. Category. So it means it's a categorical data. And those are the types of variables that we have. Now, since we understood the types of variables, there are also what we call the levels of measurement or the scales of measurement, not the units. Um, don't get me confused with the units like the kilometers and the meters and all that. No, we're talking about the levels of these variables, like your quantitative variables and qualitative variables. They've got levels within them. Um, I'm not going to ask you to do this one exercise. Um, we're just going to go straight into the levels of measurement. So, levels of measurement defines the highest order in terms of the variables that you have. So, the lowest, the lowest levels of measurement are from your categorical because there is not much that you can do with them. You just put them into categories and count how many there are within those categories. Then there is what we call the nominal order, which I will explain later on what nominal uh, nominal scale of measurement is so nominal scale of measurement categories have no order so like male and female we'll go into details in terms of that whereas with the ratio scale of measurement it is at the highest level uh, it means it's got the strongest measure of um, uh, is the strongest levels of measurement that you can get to because with that, you are able to calculate things like the ratio, the difference between two distances and so forth. <clears throat> so that is why it has the highest level. With nominal scale, it is the lowest because there's not much effort with, placed within it. Okay, so let's dig deep into understanding each and every one of them. So levels of measurement for nominal, Nominals, so for categorical data, there are two. So it's nominal and ordinal. So with nominal, there is no natural or logical order, like marital status. There is no order. There is not. When you think of nominal, think about it as none of the, the, uh, the, the, the data within that variable none of them has a, a, a priority or superiority over the other. They are just categories mm. like yes and no. Yes is not superior to a no. It's just that someone doesn't prefer this, someone prefers this. That's that. You cannot also use it in a comparison manner where you do calculations, but you can compare whether in terms of the, the values to say uh, people who answered the yes questions were more than those who answered the no question. But you can never say uh, A is better than B. It's not like that. It's what the people prefer because of this the, the levels. 
uh, or how they answered the question. So you cannot do any comparison based on that um, actual value. And I just gave examples in terms of the types of nominal variables that you can get, like political affiliation. It's not like because everybody is voting for the ANC and they win, it means ANC is superior than the other. It means people just prefer to vote ANC than the other political parties. So there is no one that is above the other. Uh, race as well. There is no one that is above the other. Things like that. Then we get what we call the nominal measures of uh, scales of measurement or levels of measurement. Ordinal also for categorical data. Here you do have a natural or logical order. For example, when you rate a service, let's say for example, after the class I give you a survey and I say rate the level of service that you got from me today as a tutor. You are going and I give you a scale and I say zero means low and uh, five means high. So it means I did bad. Five would mean I'm doing well. So you're going to rate me according to that. There is an order. There is the highest and there is the lowest. So there is an order in terms of that scale. Also with nomi with ordinal, like with nominal, you cannot use it in any calculation, but you can use it to compare because then yeah, you can compare how people have answered because yeah, comparison can be made because then yeah, you can make it, you can deduce from the information you got that the service was poor, the service was good, the service and you can compare, you can compare different uh, different measures or different levels with one another. Uh, and because the data will be ordered as well, so there is the highest value and the lowest value. For example, like the shoe size, you can compare and say the majority of people are on average, they, you can do those, um, you cannot do calculations, but you can say, uh, most people prefer shoe size five, or most people prefer shoe size 10 or something like that, or because they are levels within the shoe size sizes. So you get from, for the adult shoes, you get from size one, size two, size three, size four, size five, size six, size seven, eight, nine, ten. The bigger the size, the bigger the number of the shoe size. Also with education level, you start with primary, secondary, high school, uh, university or technical or technical uh, college or things like that. Even within the university, you start with a, a, a certificate, a diploma, a degree, honors, masters, doctorate. There are levels, so you move with the levels and that is ordinary. Then we also have what we call an interval. Interval and ratio are from quantitative side of the variable. So with interval, the data can be in an ordered scale and you are able to calculate the difference between two points and it, it will, those differences will have a meaningful information as well. With interval, there is no true zero point. What I mean by that is with an interval, it will not have a, a true zero point because let's say uh, temperature. Let's say in South Africa, we never go into the negative side uh, unless if you stay in Sutherland. I think in Sutherland, they do get to, to the negative side of things. Um, uh, I'm going to say Lesotho probably it, since these days, they, um, 
there is a snow that falls in that mountain area, so they can go into the negative. I'm not sure if in South Africa have we ever been into the negative side of the temperature, but temperature goes into the negative. So it means zero has a meaning. It's just, uh, sorry, zero has no meaning in terms of that. It's just another temperature. So it's zero degrees, it's cold. But there is another cold temperature, which is minus some number, minus four degrees, minus 11 degrees, it's cold. It's way too colder than a zero degrees. So that is why it is called an interval. It does not have a true zero point because zero for that is just another temperature. And since it's got negative numbers, you cannot do a ratio. You cannot do a ratio of a negative number. So a, a ratio of two numbers cannot be well defined if there is a negative number. You can do a ratio if all the values are positive. And I just went into that example. Temperature is one of them. Bank balance. Your bank balance can go into a minus. So it can also become an interval. So your bank balance will, can become an interval because if you are left with 25 rand in your, in your bank account and then the bank charges you services and interest and all that, your bank balance goes into a deficit, into a minus, and then that turns it into an interval scale of measurement for your for that category. Uh, sorry, for that numerical data that you have. Then the last level, which is at the highest order, is your ratio. A ratio similar to interval is an ordered scale and you are able to calculate the difference between the measurements and it has a true zero point. If you have zero, it means either you do not exist or that thing does not exist or has never been born or it's finished. So if you have zero stock, it means you don't have stock. The stock is finished. If you are born and I don't know if it's zero born, there is nobody with an age of zero. So it means that person has never been born. Um, things like that. Uh, you can think of more examples where there is a true meaning of zero, meaning zero means something um, which includes zero means something that says that thing does not exist or is not um, in existence. With ratio, you can do a comparison because like distance, you can do your ratio of your distance from A to B. You can calculate what is the ratio from moving from A to B and so forth. Um, I spoke about the fixed zero point, meaning that thing does not exist. Like your weight, if you weigh zero, it means you are finished. You don't, you are like a feather, because a feather weighs zero point, but it's got a, um, a number. Um, like your height, if the height of a, bit, a building is zero, it means that building was never been built. Distance, if I move zero, it means I have never even moved. So zero means something. So you must think about it as such that zero has a meaning. Now, <clears throat> based on what I have just said, nominal for categorical, there is no order. Ordinal, categorical, there is an order in which things happen. Highest to lowest. Interval, there is no true meaning of zero ratio. There is true meaning of zero. It means nothing. Zero means nothing. OK. The weight of watermelons in store. Here yeah, you can just tell me. You don't have to. We don't have to, to wait. 
we can do one statement at a time. There are about five statements. What is the weight? The ratio. The weight is a ratio. Because zero weight means nothing. You, it does not exist. Times of a day, morning, afternoon, evening, and night. You must Intervals. think very carefully. Yeah. You must think very carefully. Is it a categorical or is it a numeric? Let's start there. It's category. category. If you were only looking at time, it would have made it a numeric, but because they say times of the day and they give you values within it, which means it's a categorical. It's categorical. Now, you must think very hard and long about this one. Is this nominal or ordinal? Is there an order? It's ordinal. Yes, ordinal, ma'am. It's ordinal, yeah. There is an order of how things happen. So there is morning, then come afternoon, then come the evening, and then come the night. So this will be ordinal. Distance from your place to the five nearest stores. It's a ratio. Distance? It's a ratio. It's ratio. Because if you moved zero kilometers, it means you haven't moved to any of those five grocery stores. Airline companies serving a, at a given airport. Think about the airline companies at your South African airport, AXA airport, like OR Tambos and Cape Town and Lanseria, or the ones in Mpumalanga. I can't even remember the name of the airports now, or PEs. What airline companies are there? And once you thought about it, will that mean is it nominal or ordinal? Yes. Nominal. nominal. It will be nominal because there is no natural order or logic. Last one. The places in ranking of chess players, first, second, third, and fourth. It's ordinary. It's um, because it's ranking it in first, second, third, and fourth, which are categories, then it is ordinary. Now, before we move on, I need to also mention this. So sometimes ordinal and nominal values can be represented as numbers, but they mean they, they will always refer to a categorical information or variable that they are. They will just represent the actual values in numerical form, but they will represent an ordinal or numerical. For example, let, they might say rank the levels of service with a scale of one to five. So this scale of one to five, it means nothing because they might say one meaning low and five meaning high. So you can use one, two, three, and four, but they refer to certain categories within that. So we can use numerical, for nominal or ordinal, but they will mean, or they will just be placeholders for the categories. 
you must always remember that. Okay. So in terms of the levels of measurement, what can you do on those? When we do chapter three, you will understand that we're going to mainly use numerical information to summarize the data in terms of um, calculating the mean, the median, the mode, and the standard deviation. We're going to use only numerical data. But in terms of the levels of measurement and the variables, we can count and we can create a mode based on nominal information. We also, with ordinal information, you can order that, you can create counts with it, you can um, create the mode because the highest one will be the mode. You can create the median because the middle one will be your uh, the middle one will be your median. You cannot calculate the mean because you cannot summarize, you cannot sum all the, the values, uh, like one, two, three, four, five, they are categories, so you cannot add them together. You cannot calculate, uh, do the ratio calculations on some of them. Um, the actual ratio calculation. You cannot, um, so you will not be able to calculate what we call the absolute zero with nominal or ordinal because they are just categories. So in terms of intervals, you can do everything except calculating the ratio because with interval, remember it can go into the negative. You cannot do a ratio of a negative number. Uh, you cannot have an absolute zero because it can also go into the negative values. Uh, your values will, the absolute, um, because, oh yes, because it can go into the negative. And the ratio, you can apply all of them, all the order of operations like count, mode, median, mean, difference, adding and subtracting the ratio and multiplying and dividing. And there is an absolute zero because the ratio has a meaning of zero, which means zero means nothing. OK, so that is the levels of measurement. So now. Any question? Before we move on to study unit two, how are you doing so far? Are you lost? Are you seeing the light at the end of the tunnel? How are you feeling? Have I clarified some of the things that you were not sure of so far with regards to study unit one? Or we still need more work to do? I'm, I'm good, thanks. Yeah, so far, so 